What's up guys? So look at the bike we have today. Look at this bike check we got. Not sure if you guys could guess, if you guys get, there's no sticker on here, if you guys could guess what it is. I'll give you a moment to go ahead and guess what it is. I know it's one of those frames that doesn't get its hype and all that, but guys, it is a very, very important frame that belonged to a very, very important person in BMX. And let's start. This is a SM War Game. Troy McMurray signature bike. 1998, I, I recalled it, it was released. I thought it was a little bit earlier than that, around 97, but uh, they made a couple versions of this. But I know this frame uh, came from the Sabbath, and the Sabbath evolved into this. Let's take a look at this. The front, we'll start at the front here. The uh, SNM, not the SNM, the Primo Son of a Bomb hub. Super nice, new. We just laced up this wheel, so we we kind of we kind of updated for the customer. It's got Sun BFR rim, BFR, big fat rim. Really hard to find nowadays. The Primo wall 2.1. I know they did a re-release of this, and it sold out real quick but these are really good condition. The fork is not s and uh, If I recall, these are volume forks. But again, the customer that, that we uh, helped put this thing together, he's not trying to do an all s and bike. Pegs, I think they're just some generic pegs. He likes it, that's all right, we're not hating. Really cool feature, guys, the A headset tank. I wish they remake these. These are super hard to find new. Back in the days, so you could, could see how solid these are. These are solid because everybody would bust their lower caps before the whole integrated. And instead of getting the warp, uh, the, uh, the the FSA Pig or the Primo uh, Gorilla Cup, this was the um, the one to get. I like it. I like the way it looks. SNM Redneck front load, slam bars. You can tell how big the crossbar was, how lowered it, this is. The, the Odyssey module levers. Look at this thing, guys. Gigantic. Now, you know what? During this time, you weren't sparing any metal. It's just the, the more beefy you make it, the more heavy duty. The module lever was the first one to start messing with the different gyro system instead of the traditional one that comes out the two. They did this where this big giant barrel, there's inserts. You could, you could uh, insert a single and make it into a single or you insert it into a double. Really cool features. These things are actually getting harder and harder to find. Primo Chad DeGroote, signature grips. Back then, the grips were way cooler. Everybody's signature grip have like, have their like logos that kind of ID who they are, what they are. Not like the, the, the grips these days are better, but the grips back then, it's, it's, it was so much cooler. There's such cool graphics on it. We're still really good condition on here. Basically just hollow bar ends, metal bar ends. We got the s &M seat. Look at this embroidered seat. Really nice, guys. No rip. I want you guys to look at this. Let's go in the back here. Let's go in the back here. Look at this. Look at this plate. I know this right here, this is not tight because the thing is that these things are so far, these things are made so tight and these Marvin guts right here are wide. Personally, I think this is, this might have been a batch where they made it wrong where it's too wide. That's why I won't go in. Now the, now the owner of the bike told me to cut this off. No, 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 no. Guys, you devalue the seat. Look at the S&M logo. Man, this seat is about as good as good. You cut that, get rid of it just to make it fit. So he's gonna bring it back later. We're gonna we're gonna try to modify this post uh, to make this the seat work. But yeah, back in the days, guys, they did all this to beef things up. I mean, you have to have a gusset in your seat. The oversized rails, that's just an overkill. But the more overkill, the, the better. The double clamp, primo stem. Remember, you gotta check all the other ones I said. 
if you didn't have a double clap seat post, you might get jumped at the end of the bike rack. You're not the cool guy, you know? You had a double. Did you have a double clap? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a must. It was, I it, even cut one in half so Johnny can have the other half. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's not a bad idea, but, but, you, you might not have noticed it, but the, the clamp, only one of it worked. The top was fake. So it actually stepped up. So when you cut it, you might have to wedge it and then hammer it in. I'm I sure. only had to worry about mine working the rest yeah. of the Johnny. So yeah, but that, that, was, that was the hot ticket, guys. I mean, it's a C-clamp. Why would you want double? But it's just one of those things, you know? The, the bigger, the better. Look at this sprocket, guys. Profile Blackjack. They actually still make this, except they even make it a little bit smaller. This is by far, maybe one of the, the, the sprocket is my all-time favorite. It's a real cool design. Look, you, you gotta see it from here. Look at how thick. This is my phone. Look at how thick that is. And they did that because everybody was doing disasters. Everybody was just doing gnarly, gnarly tricks just to break stuff. And they made everything big. Believe it or not, guys, this is not the thickest. They had thicker ones. And then they also have a, a, a sprocket guard, which you brought up. It was called the, the, uh, pork, the chop. pork chop. I mean, something this thick and you still need a chain guard? That's ridiculous. These are the Profile SS crank. So be, if you guys are familiar with the Profile columns, these are the grandfather version of the columns, except the columns, they're thinner and lighter. But these were the, the crank to have, like, instead of the race cranks. Beefy, you got the gigantic pedal bosses right here. I mean, people weren't worried about making the bike lightweight. Uh, these are the OG tenderizers, not like the one we have here. The one we have here, I said, was say, are the version threes. Giant chain tensioners, of course. You guys notice the dropout. Look at from the side, look at how big the dropout is. Why, why? But this is why, guys, look at the chain. Notice how the chain, it goes inside that. So when you're grinding and you slip, this acts as a hub guard. That's why for some of you guys, why in hell would they put this so long when they could cut this and make it cleaner? It served as a uh, free will protector instead of uh, running like a bulky hub guard. Let's look at the frame. Let me turn this thing around so you guys get a better idea now that I'm gonna talk about the frame. This thing's gonna break my glass, man. Hey, what is this? Is that a gay, gay little animal? <laughs> the Warpig frame itself. Oh my God, my knee just locked up. Look at this tube, guys. Look at this, look at this. Huge, huge. Looks like a limp or something. <laughs> See, you know, I stopped making those jokes because like you always get mad at me. And then you, you, you go and you pick it up. That, that, that's my joke. You, you gotta allow me to do that. But look at look how big this is. They did this for strength. Because imagine if this went all the way up here. So it's easier to bend. So therefore they made a roof short. So it's harder to bend. Same thing with the bottom. The oversized. Look at this gusset, guys. Instead of using just a plate, a little plate, they go, you know what? Why don't we just cut half of a tube and make that? I really like that function during that generation. A lot of bikes did that. Um, but this is one of the, 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 the features that a lot of you guys don't notice. If you guys look at from an angle, notice how this thing goes up and down. Instead of a smooth, a smooth transition, it kind of slope up and it's straight. So that's actually something Troy McMurray designed. If you guys notice when you guys are learning how to feeble grind and when your, your, your crank I mean, your peg slipped the ledge, you get the chain stay all eaten up and grinded down. Well, he had, he had SNL made his up higher. So it prevents this from hitting the ledge. So that's why he had it going up like this. This is the only frame that I could recall that, that did this. If you guys know anybody else that did it, please throw it in there because we're all here just to be educated, even me. So this is one of the key features, guys. Really cool. The, 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 wait, oh, hey, what's up, Dylan? Oh, look at the little man. I think the irony in this is Troy McMurray 
was one of the, the breakless pioneers. I still remember seeing him uh, in the X game. I would say he, he was the first X game rider to use no brakes. But this rider put brakes on it. So, but that's, that's okay. There's nothing wrong, guys. He wanted brakes on it. He likes Troy McMurray. Uh, and he wasn't, you know, fearless enough. But yeah, if this was Troy's bike, it would be brakeless. He built it, he said he built it closest to the way Troy would run it. But he also had brakes. What do you guys think? Pretty cool? Who had one? Which one of you guys had one? You, you actually did. I, I never knew you had one. I'll send you a picture. Pretty funny. I actually never knew. So any of you guys ever had one? You know of what these? he doesn't have? Huh. The big chain I did. And it always made a hole in your, in your yeah. chain stay. Well, that's, you know, guys, through all my years of, of helping people restore stuff, chains is probably one of the hardest things to find because they all broke and you throw it away. You save it? Who saves it? You have a broken frame, you can still save it. You know, but yeah. Uh, what, Sharp? Sharp Sprocket made a 415, 410 oh, yeah, HD. Right. Those are probably the biggest. Kink, everybody did one. But it was so big that they actually break. You know, so that they are missing that. But yeah, I mean, you guys, who have one? Who does, like, like, you know what? Any Anytime I do something like this, you guys have something cool to share. Uh, DM us the picture. I'll, I'll be glad to post it up. It's a big community here. So yeah, this is a real cool treat. Uh, I had the privilege of when I first opened the shop, Troy always came in. Really nice guy considering how 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 heavy metal the guy is. His bike's called the Warpig. He's a very, very nice guy. Uh, go follow him. Troy McMurray on Instagram. He, he's starting to ride again. You guys send him a shout out. I think uh, uh, he's, uh, he's getting cleaned up a lot, riding a lot. You start to see him do cool tricks again, but uh, send him a shout out, man. Troy McMurray, he's probably one of my favorite riders, all right? Uh, you guys, any requests, anything like that, send it to me. Request on, on Alf. We need some ideas. Uh, we're just here for you guys, man, all right? Um, hope you guys like that. Peace out.